G'day, I'm Yuki San Dev, and in part 9 of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be scripting to move an object with rigid body and add force. Alright, so in part 7 we covered moving an object in script using transform.translate. Uh, today we will make an object move again, but this time we will be using rigid body and add force. Now that rigid body comes into play, we are simulating real world physics, so it is much more configurable and a far different experience as you will see. The whole physics system is rather big, but we will just run through the basics to get started. So let's get going. Alrighty, so let's set things up in our scene. Uh, we're going to need a plane and a sphere for this little piece. So let's right click in our hierarchy and create a plane. I'm going to call it ground. And reset its transform. Change uh, the scale of X to 4.5. And the scale of Y and Z to 4. And change its Y position to minus 1. Now I'm going to add a texture. Uh, this grass one looks cool. Okay, let's tweak this a bit. Um, if you are following along with me, then click on ground and change the tiling to I think X10 and Y10 should do it. Yeah, a little bit more detail. Just remember in my description there is a link to these images that I use if you would like to use them too. Right, now we need a sphere. So right click hierarchy again and create a sphere. Going to name it player this time and reset its transform lock its xyz scale and change it to 0 0.5 uh, notice the ball or player is above the ground because we dropped the plane down to minus one we don't want to start the game with the ball inside the ground also let's give it a texture i'm going to go with this black and white pattern and change its tiling um let's do x1 and y 0 0.5 okay now i'm also going to turn off skybox for the sky so click on your camera and select skybox and change it to solid color then select the color i'm going to go with black all right, now just to tidy up down here with the images folder. And drag our images in. And now just making sure that we have a reasonable view of the ball in our game screen so that when we play, we can actually see what's going on with the ball. Uh, if you want to copy my camera position, then here it is. Now we're going to need a rigid body on this ball, so let's add one with add component and rigid body. And just make sure use gravity is on, which it probably should be by default anyway. Alright, we're pretty much ready to start getting this ball to do stuff. So as before, let's make a scripts folder. And make a script in the folder. And I'm going to name it player controller. And drag the script onto the ball. And just double check that it's in there. Cool. So we are ready. So double click the player controller script to open it. Okay, so let's set up some variables here. So first off, we want public float force equals one. 
And this is for controlling the push force on the ball. And private float vertical. This is for our forward and back control. And private float horizontal. This is for our left and right control. And now a new one. Type in private rigid body. And we'll name it player RB. Just RB for rigid body. Now in your start method, type in player RB equals get component. And then you want the caret brackets. So caret bracket rigid body end caret bracket, and then two empty brackets, two empty parentheses brackets. Uh, I'll explain this after we're done with the first segment of code, uh, but do make sure that you have that the brackets surrounding the rigid body are actually caret brackets rather than the normal brackets, and that you have two empty brackets at the end. Now, in your update method, type in vertical equals input dot get axis vertical. And then player RB dot add force vector three dot forward times force times vertical. And you can copy the above two lines of code and paste them below and then change vertical to horizontal. and forward to right. And let's also throw in some rem statements so that we know what the code is doing. Okay, as per the previous video, you already know about input. So here's the new stuff. So first we created a new variable type rigid body. It can only be a rigid body. It's not a number or anything else. It's very specific and it will only behave in the way a rigid body should. Then in the start method, we retrieved the actual rigid body component from the ball and stored it in player RB. Now that we have the actual component, we used a new method add force, which will push the player forward, back, left and right with the force set in our force variable. This action is obviously very different from the transform.translate method in earlier videos, which was simply moving at a certain speed along an axis. So let's save this and get back to the game. So let's look at the rigid body component in here real quick. So we covered a little bit of this in part four and five of the series, but these names are pretty on the button as to what they do. Uh, let's take drag, for example. It's friction. That's all. Drag is zero, so no friction. If the ball is moving, it won't stop. Uh, let's just run the game and test our script anyway. Uh, if you are in play focused mode, maybe change it to play maximized so that you get a better view. And run. Press your arrow keys or WASD keys to make the ball move around. It's a little bit different than transform, right? After you take your finger off the button, the ball keeps rolling. And if you let it, it would roll forever because we set the drag to zero. No matter how slow you get that thing to roll, it just won't stop. All right, let's stop the game. Now, there isn't much I can show you here because it's just a matter of you playing with the various options to get the desired effect. Uh, mass is weight, essentially. Drag, you already know. Angular drag is rotational drag, etc., etc. Uh, let me try something here. I want my player to go faster, but I also want to slow them down quicker. So I would increase their force to, let's say, four. And then increase drag to make the ball slow down faster. So let's try three. And run. Cool. Accelerates faster, but slows down quicker. I don't know, try changing the mass to say 100 and then run it to see how hard it is to move the ball. You would have to increase your player's force. Uh, also, don't forget you can make changes to see their effects while the game is running as long as your play mode, of course, is set back to play focused. 
Uh, but just remember that any changes you make during play mode won't be saved when you stop the game. So if you have some numbers you like, then write them down and uh, change them in edit mode, i.e. not play mode. All right, I'm going to change my force to 0 0.5 and drag to 1 for the next step. Now we will make the ball jump up when the spacebar is pressed. So let's get back to the script. Okay, let's make a variable for the force of the jump. So type in public float jump force equals 7. And let's make a comment for the next piece of script. Then type if input dot get key down key code dot space then in between the curly brackets type player rb dot add force vector three dot up times jump force comma force mode dot impulse all right so a couple of new things here Firstly, in the input, we are using get key down rather than use get key like the previous video. So if you use get key, then when the key is pressed and held down, the script will keep running what's in the if statement. Whereas the get key down will run the code when the key is pressed and then stop until the key is released and pressed again. So naturally for jump, that's what we need. Otherwise, if someone held the spacebar down, then the ball would just keep flying up in the air. And secondly, we've added a force mode impulse to our jump code. So by default, without force mode, when add force is used, it's not applied all at once. It's applied gradually over time. So because we want one short, sharp up force to jump, then we use impulse, which will apply all the force in one shot. Okay, so I think we're ready to jump. So let's save our script. And run. So the ball can now jump with the press of the spacebar. And if we hold the spacebar down, it doesn't keep jumping. Cool. So again, you can play with jump force variable and the rigid body settings to get the desired effect. Uh, obviously, if the mass was higher, then you would need a lot more jump force to get it to lift, etc. Um, let's add a new physic material and make the ball bounce as well. So right click in your project and create a physic material. I'm going to name it bounce and give it 0.8 bounciness and a maximum bounce combine. Now click back on the player and add the material in your sphere collider component. Also, uh, let's turn drag down a little. Let's try 0.4 and play. All right, it's bouncy. Well, the only thing left here is add talk. Um, I probably didn't create the best scenario in this game to use talk, to be quite honest. Um, let me think. So I guess uh, we'll just make the ball spin. So let's get back in the script. Uh, now, do we associate it with this with a key? Um, I think we just get it to spin when the game starts. Yeah, let's do that. So in your start method, type in player rb dot add talk vector three dot up times thirty. Of course, you could create a variable for the talk power rather than typing in thirty. Uh, so that's it. When the game starts, add torque will spin the ball on its axis to the right. Uh, it, it will have no effect on movement, it will just spin. Of course, as soon as you start moving the ball around, the spin will change because we just ran that code once in the start method, uh, just to demonstrate uh, what torque does. All right, let's save the script and play. Cool. All righty. Uh, one more quick thing, since we are now dealing with a simulated real-world physics, you can also change the gravity in your script uh, with a simple line of code. All these three lines here will do the same thing. 
The first one would be useful if you only wanted to change the gravity of one particular axis, X, Y, or Z. It's pretty cool that you can actually do that in the first place. The second is useful if you just wanted zero gravity overall. Um, and the third one is good and quick if the gravity amount is the same for all axes. So the star equals is basically in English just saying X, Y, Z, all the same value. Um, so yeah, give it a try. Try try gravity zero and uh, the ball won't ever touch the ground. Uh, just remember not to jump, otherwise it won't come back down. Uh, try gravity three for some weird bouncing. Uh, it can be fun to play with and you're almost certainly going to be using it at some stage to uh, create more realistic environments. So that's a little taste of rigid body and physics using add force and add talk. Uh, obviously a lot more you can do with it, but at this beginning stage, uh, I think it's enough. Apologies for the add talk part. Uh, I probably should have done something a little better with it, um, but we will be using talk throughout the series anyway, so I think we're good. So in the next video, well, I could just keep making videos on each item, but I think at this point it might be f more fun now to actually make something as we learn. So probably the next video will be making our first simple game using what we've learned and some new stuff. Uh, it will be a little step up from the previous videos because we will cover more new stuff at a faster pace. But if at any stage there is something that you would like me to elaborate on, then please do leave a comment and I will try to make supplementary videos on those items. So I hope to see you in the next video.